Hi, my name is Brian Gruber. I'm the founder of Integrated Orthopedics, and today we're going to be talking about chronic exertional compartment syndrome. So there are two types of compartment syndrome, and probably definitely the most common type is an acute compartment syndrome. Uh, so initially, I'm going to talk a little bit about just anatomy. We're going to use the leg uh, for our example. So there are four compartments in the leg, and what the compartments are are where the muscles are. So there's the anterior in the front, lateral, posterior, and deep. So that's the four. And I'm not going to go through all the muscles and such, but really the compartment, each compartment has its own uh, blood supply, uh, nerves and muscles. So that's all sort of a unit. Think of it like an apartment. You know, you've got the apartment building and then little, you know, you have the apartments. So that is uh, in the uh, in the leg, there are four, okay? Uh, and what can happen is that blood, and typically it's blood, um, can get in one of those compartments and really increase the pressure. So the, the compartment itself is not, uh, cannot expand. So what happens is, say, fluid gets in there and it just builds the pressure higher and higher and higher and what happens is the tissue in that compartment can get uh, it can can be damaged as can the blood supply as can the nerve so the most common way this happens typically is a fracture so blood gets into one of those compartments it bleeds and then patients come in with a compartment syndrome this is typically an ER situation it's exquisitely uncomfortable um, so it's not something that you can just take you know some aspirin or, or Advil or even pain pills pain pills won't typically cut it uh, so that patient's going to come to the ER and so that's called a chronic compartment syndrome and, and that's really not what the focus is today of that talk but I wanted to sort of explain Explain the compartments, for example, of the leg, and, and sort of how this, how to introduce the concept. So what we see in the clinic is called chronic exertional compartment syndrome, and that is typically, and we're going to use runners as the example because that's usually the issue. But it's basically that you get an elevation of that pressure uh, in one of the compartments of the leg, and it causes a lot of pain. So a classic uh, person would be a runner who, each time they run, say at mile number one they begin to have increased pain in the leg, which prevents them from running. Um, in, in, to, and there are many other symptoms, but the classic is pain. Oftentimes the patient will complain of, of weakness and the inability to raise their foot up. We call that a kind of a, uh, it's a pseudo drop foot, but they can drag their, drag their feet almost like they're gonna trip. Uh, they'll compl and they'll complain you know, of numbness and not being able to feel their foot. So that's one of the classic sort of uh, uh, presentations, if you will, of, of chronic exertional compartment syndrome. Chronic exertional is really uh, isolated essentially to the leg. You can get a compartment syndrome anywhere. So you can get one in the arm or the forearm, um, the one where the blood can sort of, you know, get in the, get in the compartment. But the chronic exertional is primarily a leg-based situation. Your chronic exertional compartment syndrome is a, it's an increase in pressure. It's typically not a blood product that is causing that increase in pressure. It's the muscles, or the, the, you know, the muscles are expanding and basically they're too big for the compartment. Uh, so when they get swollen, when they, you know, when we sort of the, during exercise, the, there, you know, there's more blood that goes in, in the vessels and makes the swelling, if you will, uh, and that is not tolerated in that compartment. So then it starts to press on the artery, the vein, uh, the nerve, uh, and, 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 and you get pain. The chronic compartment, interestingly, it's typically, it, it almost goes away as fast as it comes. So somebody will stop, start running, and maybe they get symptoms at mile one, and when they stop, the symptoms go away. And they sort of just continue to repeat that way, where they can they run and they, it happens again. The time when it would be dangerous if you just didn't listen to your body, um, and that would be unusual but possible. So you need to listen. You know, if 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 somebody is diagnosed with a compartment syndrome, you wouldn't tell them to run through that pain. You would, you know, that that patient should stop. Most of the time, the body will make you stop because it hurts that much. The patients really don't have a choice. They're, they're going to stop. But usually there's no muscle death. There's no muscle necrosis. There's no long-term ramifications. Um, but what we'll see in clinic is patients don't want to stop doing their activity. So they're looking for answers. They want to know why, you know, what's going on. Uh, and oftentimes this is a diagnosis where people will see three, four, five providers until they finally get an answer uh, because sometimes it can be, you know, if somebody's not familiar with this, this diagnosis, you know, the, it can be missed. 
The best way to diagnose chronic exertional is with a pressure monitor. So what we do is we bring the patient in uh, and we measure the compartments and, and what it does, it's a, it's a little needle uh, connected to a pressure monitor. So initially you'll, you'll anesthetize the area and you'll place the needle into the compartment. And the pressure should be very low, zero, one, two. That's a typical rest, we call that a resting pressure. And then we have the patients go out and run or, or stair climb or do whatever it takes for them to recreate their symptoms. And then we have them come back in and they're sweaty and it's right when they're coming in and, they, and typically they're still painful. And you know, if they have the foot that won't move up, that will be consistent too. And then you'll recheck that pressure. And what we're looking for is a rise. So we're basically looking where that pressure was zero to one, two at rest after exercise or post-exercise pressures, you know, are going up to 25, 30, 40, 50, 60. And that's classic and that's confirmed compartment syndrome. You know, the treatment really is based on what the patient's expectations and really what they want. So if you have a runner and the only time they get compartment syndrome or they feel chronic exertional compartment syndrome is when they run, they can discontinue that. So that's always a choice, you know, activity modify. Uh, for a lot of patients don't want to do that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll make, um, it's called a fasciotomy, which we do it um, uh, through a, a small incision. And basically that compartment, we release the compartment. And the idea, of, or think of it sort of like, uh, I talk to the patients like a casing on a hot dog or a red hot. So say the casing is actually the fascia. And when you sort of put that on the grill, that splits. It's kind of what you're doing with the release is basically you're, you're zipping the casing. So when you put the hot, when, you know, the for that example, when the, the, the meat of the hot dog can sort of easily come out, and that's sort of the same way with the muscle, where the muscle, as then it will expand, it will have enough room where it won't be compressed. The surgery for a compartment syndrome is about 30 minutes. The fasciotomy is done in the surgical suite. You do go to sleep for it. It's a, uh, you know, a, a, it is, so it, it is a surgery. It's a fairly minor surgery, but it is a surgery. You know, the your patients are full weight bearing. You're able to, uh, uh, you know, crutches for, you know, a few days, uh, and we get patients into physical therapy, and typically the recovery time is somewhere, you know, between three or four months for runners to get back to running. After the, the surgery, therapy is important because, you know, that it, uh, you, you need to build that muscle back up a bit as well as, well as get the swelling down. So that's the uh, goal of physical therapy early, uh, and then to get the strength and then the, the uh, um, you know, with confidence again, really, to get back uh, athletically. The success rate for the procedures is, is exceedingly high. It's really getting, getting there and sort of making the correct diagnosis because we see many people who come in and they think they have compartment syndrome because they've Googled it and they, they feel that they're, you know, they have a lot of the symptoms and, and you do the pressures and, and they're, they're low. So that's why we always do the pressures and we just don't go based on, you know, what the patient's symptoms are because sometimes, you know, there, there are other things that can cause similar type uh, uh, issues. Uh, they can be, be neurologic or vascular um, underlying issues. So that's why we do the compartment test. Uh, but once it's truly confirmed that it's a compartment syndrome, uh, the success rate is very high. <laughs>